let's go with this new front here a sportier front grille and also new headlamps with matrix led as an option and you can either get a pure petrol engine for us markets european markets will be hybrid only and then you can see here this blue backed toyota logo indicating that this is the hybrid the length is at 4 meters 37 or 172 inches the hatch here with a shorter wheelbase than the sedan or the estate we have it here in jupiter blue and i'm soon going to show you an edge gray estate here we have 18 inch wheels as well so the high trim pretty cool styling indeed it looks already sporty in the rear you get these samurai cut tail lamps there you see that lexus and toyota design definitely play together and it's such a sculptural rear actually it looks really unique but the disadvantage is because of this small area right here and the big here you do lose trunk space we'll also see that very soon in this facelift you now get this sportier contrasting lower bumper as well next to the hatch version in the us for example rather the sedan is being sold and in europe we have the estate the touring sports as the longer model at 4 meters 65 or 183 inches so both sedan and estate are around 30 centimeters or 10 inches approximately longer than the hatch this here is also the new gr sport which is also available for the hatch this is the key fob nothing special and the dog cloning sound is also nothing special nice wide contour stitch this is also soft right here so the top structure here looks good the window lever is not that good actually these nice entry badges right here in the lower part and then i'm really a fan of these floor mats you know with a contrast around that looks like from a super high luxury car that's still real buttons at the steering wheel for example for the volume control right here and right side for the cruise control take a look at the seats they are actually pretty spectacular because even in normal trims they are integrated head restraint alike sport seats so they look pretty fancy gr sport interior features red contrast stitches the base seat form is the same has the sport tr seat with integrated head restraint but you can see here fear fabric on the inside leather red on the outside bright accentuations and this gr stamped in here at the head restraint so also a beautiful design for the gr sport and red contrast stitches also a thing here for the gr sport inside of the steering wheel and the rest of the cockpit so a little bit more spice with this sporty trim seating position surprisingly comfortable because yeah with 189 or six for two to me this is a tiny vehicle but i sit very very well in here headroom wise it works and also this sport seat actually it is sporty and comfortable at the same time so you feel like you, like you would be sitting in a bigger vehicle so no complaints at all about the comfort and also because of the fabric surface here it stays cool in summer stays warm in winter and also somewhat breathable so very satisfied with that and also with the steering wheel position and so on manual control in and out up and down and also in a very smooth way interior cockpit overview clean layout i really like the soft touch here at the dashboard with the wide contrast stitches new screens updated us models get a seven inch and eight inch european models here get now full glory 12.3 inch digital instruments on the left and on the right side 10.5 inch and soon more details to all of these interesting is that we have still real buttons for example a volume control on the screen with buttons yes a real climate unit here easy to turn also for the vent strength and so on really appreciate this easy solution software update you can see here even the car internal gps is smooth and responsive now first time we would actually use it in toyota that's actually pretty cool then the carplay integration that one's also wireless android auto would be wired at this moment and we also have the jbl sound system in here and this actually delivering a very decent sound for this vehicle maybe also because of this acoustic area here in the front and rear view camera this is also kind of disappointing bad resolution and also somewhat colorless these are the digital instruments pretty clear to read you also have some adaptive content like this what you want to see in the middle part but really this is the map guidance in the instruments not sure if this is going to be helpful in any way um, yeah 
So rather keep it with reading the speed, I guess. Car plane and out it doesn't show there, by the way. This is just a car internal map, but yeah, again, not really that helpful. And you also get this head-up display. Middle console in the front, inductive charging pad. And then you have here this seat heating, two levels, and listen to that. Old school clicking sounds. And then further down below, shifting up to the sports mode, down to the eco mode. So it's also about the throttle input. And then this shifting DMA is actually quite cool. It's a real run, old school one. And then listen to that. Yeah, when you do the quarter mile, you would do like this. <laughs> yeah, just kidding. Here, this is not D mode. And when you put one more further behind, you're in the B mode. And the B mode is actually when you're going downhill for a longer time, that engine brake is on that you don't kind of like overcharge the battery in a way. Disappointing in this interior, the cup holders, the material and also non-adaptive and also this middle armrest here is just loosely attached and yeah that is really... I mean this is a high trim interior like an XSE in the US, um, some it's called lounge in Germany for example. But yeah the only thing is you have a lot of space here, USB-C charger and 12 volt power supply. And rear seating in the hatch, remember the hatch has shorter wheelbase than the sedan or the estate and it means, well, headroom is okay. Yeah, I do touch the seating with my hair, but that's fine actually. And also the bench here is long enough and it's actually quite comfortable to sit on. But legroom just does not work. You can see here, I don't fit in here when I'm also driving and see here this cool, comfortable, sporty like seats. They are very voluminous and therefore also limit rear legroom. So rear legroom is probably the thing that this vehicle does not have. Now to the trunk here, manual opening and it's a really light hatch. It's actually fun to open it. 360 liters would be 310 liters with the two liter hybrid actually. So this one here is a little bit bigger volume wise and you have here this sill. It will be different in the estate version where you have no loading sill. Soon going to show you that. And the length in the hatch is about 75 centimeters or yeah, between 29 and 30 inches. And the width here between the wheel arches in the, you know, where the seats go is more like 95 centimeters, 37 inches. It's just longer here in the very back part. So um, yeah, it's a small hatch, so you're always somewhat limited in the trunk. But here you can fold the seats. There is this step then here. The total length here when I fold the seat, 150 meters or 59 inches. Depending on the market, you also get non-hybrids. For example, the US hatch is pure petrol only. And you get the hybrid with the sedan. But the European market is all about the hybrids now with the Corolla. And major upgrade, now the fifth generation hybrid. That means lithium ion battery now, higher capacity, better performance, at the same time lower consumption and also more efficiency in the whole system also for the pure combustion engine part. There are two versions. The 2-liter hybrid has been upgraded and now at 7.5 seconds in the acceleration figure, so half a second quicker. And the 1.8 hybrid, which we have here today, an even more major upgrade, now at 9.2 seconds in the acceleration figure and that means almost 2 seconds quicker indeed. Acceleration. Well, that was 0 to 70 kilometers an hour and you might have heard that it was not as bad as from the sound if you compare it with the previous hybrid gen, this being the fifth gen. So basically you have, especially when you drive normally and so on, lower RPM, less engine noise, at the same time more performance, also because of that new battery and so on. That sounded not too bad, you know. So they call this here eCVT. But it's not a mechanical old CVT, you know, where you have this, you know, like, like this cone and you have a, uh, you know, belt running over it, a different, different status. That's like the old CVT mechanical concept. But their eCVT here is working with a planetary gearbox, but is working like a CVT. A very interesting system indeed. And it is definitely smoother now. This was the sport mode. Otherwise, you would normally go to the normal mode and the throttle input is also normalized. In sport mode, throttle input is a little bit more. Um, Steering-wise, doesn't make a big difference actually. And making use of this hybrid drivetrain is really 
driving it in a very, very smooth way. So just slightly on the throttle, then maybe going off the throttle, a little bit on the brakes, you use recuperation again, you have these electric moments. This one is not about how far does it go all electric, it's, it's always changing back and forth and then you can also score a good mileage and we're talking about fuel consumption later on at the end of the driving part. Here also when you're going uphill and I accelerate a little bit harder maybe, you hear it is not as noisy as before and at the same time you've also experienced that especially the 1.8 hybrid is so much quicker than before. It's 1.7 seconds quicker to be very exact if you compare it to the previous gen. So upgrades for both engines, also for the 2.0-liter hybrid, but the upgrade here in the 1.8 is just more significant. That's very interesting. Yeah, once again about this B mode in this um, shifting selector. This would be really when we're going down and on the other side and you're going like, like an alpine pass down again for like half an hour and you want to use the engine brakes that the normal brakes don't overheat and at some point the bra the, uh, the um, the battery is also full from that recuperation and then you can't get any more battery uh, energy in that in that battery and so you would need basically this this b mode you can also activate the active lane keeping assist let's see how that one turns out here you can see it follows this slight bend actually also in a smooth way then the distance to the truck in front of me is being kept not too intrusive LTA unavailable soon take, says here because it wants me to take control of the seeing wheel but that was here like for show purposes so that was actually quite smooth and here we can also accelerate up the hill then now yeah there you hear this effect a little bit but again it's not too hard actually now a little bit fast and the corner yeah there is where the hatch is actually a lot of fun pretty cool so and also when you go like a little bit left and right. The only thing is that sometimes the steering is a little bit too light for me. That's probably for comfort reasons that they want to have it easy when parking in and out. But when sporty driving, it could give you a little bit more feedback, I think. But it's not too bad overall. And again, there's no dead zone area. So you have feeding and control over the car basically all the time. And we have very nice curvy roads here and it's really a lot of fun. So the fuel economy here on our trip, around 5 liters on 100 kilometers, decent result. It's 47 mpg US, 56 mpg UK. You can also compare the Honda Civic Hybrid or, brand internally, the Toyota Corolla Cross. 